Hi guys, welcome to the fifth episode of PCF tutorial for beginners. Today we will be discussing about the manifest file for fields. In the last episode we have seen how to create a project using PCF builder tool. And we have also seen when you create a new PCF project the manifest file is automatically generated. Now let's go to the manifest file. As I explained in the last episode, manifest file is nothing but an XML file which is the metadata of the control, which means it contains the details and properties of the control. As you can he see here, the first tag is a control tag and which explains the properties of the control. You can see first one is namespace. Since this is a beginner's tutorial, I'm not explaining the significance or much details about this one, but this is just a namespace used to group things together. And next is a constructor. This is again uh, a code related item. So I'm not explaining in detail, but just to, for your understanding, this is used to initialize your methods in the beginning. The next version. Version is very important. This refers to the version of your control. And you need to notice one thing. Whenever you make a change to your PC of control, you need to increment the version before building your tool. Because if the version is not incremented, the changes will not reflect in serious environment. For example, if I have a control created, I have some properties and the version is now 0.0.1. Now, I'm making some changes to this control, which is already deployed in the serious environment. And if I'm importing the solution without incrementing the version, what happens is that the changes won't be reflected in the serious environment because system will think it's still the old version and controls is the same old pro having the old property so the changes will not be reflected there so take care of this thing whenever you build a pcf control then display name key is nothing but the name display name of the control you can see it here let's take it here see this is a display name or for all other controls you can see linear gauge linear slider canvas up r knob so all these things are the display name property which is defined here. It can have spaces as well. There is no problem. Then description key. Description key is nothing but the description of the control. You can see it here. See this description. So whatever you get there, it will be reflected there. And this also can have the white spaces. Next item is control type. Control type is standard property. Uh, it will be all uh, no need to change this and this will, this will be always standard until an update from Microsoft so let's go to the next item property property is actually what you call the bridge between your control and the CDS or in simple terms you can call this as a parameter to the control like you can pass values or you can pass values from control to CDS also so it's uh, the parameters are similar like name is there this is a name of your uh, property then display name as I shown here I'll take another example let's go back to our control and I'm taking linear gauge add so these are the properties this will ask us to we, we can define values we, we can pass values to the control it can be from a field or it see you can take this value from a field or you can type in the value here this i think i have already explained in episode number three you can pass this value so these are these properties or these parameters we define as properties like here okay so description key uh, description key is a description of the uh, parameter like you see it is changing here so this text like the text you give here will be reflected over there and the display name same as the control name and dis uh, control display name and uh, the description okay of type here this is the type of the uh, property which means it can be single line of text or wall number uh, like like that and there is one more type which which i'll show from another manifest file which is type group you can define a group of data types also for a property for example here you can see I have created a new uh, 
type group called numbers and I have added all the data types like wall number, currency, floating point and decimal and here I have given inst instead of in this manifest file what I have given is off type but since this control is going to have multiple type of uh, data, data multiple data types as parameter I have given off type group which means this is going to be or this property is going to accept a group of uh, data types which and I have given the group name numbers and it have these values so when you upload or when you publish this uh, control to your CDS instance and here I'll take, yeah here when you try to uh, take value from a field see it will list all these type of fields or you can or it will accept not only like uh, that way it will accept all these type of values from here okay hope that is clear and we'll take next one let's see it here here next item is usage and it is mentioned here bound there are two type of properties uh, you can define here bound or input bound is nothing which is bound with a field in the CDS environment for example let's take this one here if you take uh, I'm cancelling it okay what happened yeah so for this linear gauge value property was bound one and you can see I I'm adding this to budget amount field so what happens is that it will be it will take the first one and it will be bound towards the budget amount field which means uh, like inside the curve which I will explain when you when we start modifying the index.tx file but for your understanding now this property is bound with this particular field and if you change the values in the uh, value for the property this particular property inside your code it can it will be automatically reflected back to the budget amount field or uh, it will be it will not it is it is not automatically but there are some uh, some uh, slight uh, things you you need to do inside your code which we will explain in coming episode but uh, for now just understand this is going to be uh, bound with a field in the series and this is not editable as well no please note that if a field is bound it will the control will take directly take value from the field and it will push values to the field as well it is not an editable property to like that but if you use here instead of bound if you give input uh, let me take the other one uh, no here also it is bound but uh, if you give it here input like this the field will appear like this property with this or the parameter will appear like this you can give input values like let's say there are some examples like you can give some keys api keys api key there are other methods also i'm just giving an idea only you can api key or some random values let's say for this one this control is asking minimum value maximum value for the control to set so it we are giving some configurable options inside the control and it will take those values only so that it is something uh, if it is input it is something which allow the user to input something okay I hope that is clear so that's it about the manifest file and there are some other things which I'll explain uh, below is resource resource is where you can refer to resource files the code files like here we have index.ts file is there if you have a css which i will be showing in another example or coming uh, upcoming uh, episodes you can give the path and the order of the css file which css file it should take and another uh, tag is the uh, feature usage which means which all features you must be using in your pcf control like uh, capture audio from the device capture image capture video barcode value and uh, current position pick file picker or to use web api please not if you need to use web api inside your control you need to enable this one uncomment you can uncomment this part of code and you can enable it then yeah uh, utility is there another field i miss from the property tag is is required whether the property is a mandatory property or not for example coming to here you can see 
the min value, max value and step all these are required parameters or required properties without giving value you cannot save or you cannot enable this control to the particular field which means if you make it true it will be mandatory or if you or if you think that is uh, not, not a mandatory parameter you can give it as false so that it won't be mandatory or it won't ask you user to enter the, uh, the value it will ask but it is not mandatory and i think guys it is clear and we'll see you in the next episode in the next episode we will be explaining about uh, the same manifest file but for data templates or data sets or in simple terms for subgrids or views if you create a pcf control to mask your standard views or subgrids how to create or how to design your manifest file till then bye bye thank you guys